Hello, I'm uh, Zubair Nasi. I'm the professor and chairman of the Department of Medicine at the Nova Medical Campus in Falls Church, Virginia. I'm delighted to talk to you about a study that we presented. Uh, uh, the study's title is Regenerate. It's a phase three randomized clinical trial of abuticolic acid for treatment for patients with non-alcoholic steatohepatitis with stage two and three fibrosis. This study was a is an international multi-central uh, uh, multi-site study, and it really randomized patients with biopsy proven NASH who had at least uh, fibrosis stages of two and three, and to one of the three, or three arms of this of 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 this study, which was either placebo, 10 milligram of obiticolic acid, and 25 milligram of obiticolic acid. The study had two endpoints that uh, were primary endpoints that uh, could have been met. And the main uh, uh, endpoint that, that was, that was uh, quite important from our perspective was improvement of fibrosis uh, by one stage or more without worsening of steatohepatitis. And of course, that's important because fibrosis is the most important independent predictor of long-term outcome, including mortality. The second endpoint was resolution of steatohepatitis without worsening of fibrosis. Now, if the study met one of the two endpoints, it was considered to be successful. The study is an event-driven study that could take up to up to five years, but the interim analysis is beta based on 18-month biopsy-driven uh, uh, interim analysis that was already negotiated with the FDA in the United States. According to the result of the interim analysis, OCA 25 milligram arm met the predefined criteria for success in terms of fibrosis, meaning it had almost two to three times higher rate of improvement of fibrosis by one stage or more without worsening of steatohepatitis. And uh, 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 this, was a, this was highly statistically significant and made the study a success. In addition to the improvement of fibrosis by one stage, in fact, patients with 25 milligram of OCA also improved about three times more the uh, rate of improvement of fibrosis by two stage or higher as compared to placebo. The second endpoint was a difficult endpoint to meet, which is the uh, resolution of NASH without worsening of, uh, of fibrosis. And the reason it's difficult to meet is that there, it really is this endpoint contains three different criteria. One, there has to be an overall assessment by the center pathologist that there was no steatohepatitis. Second, the feature of ballooning in the liver biopsy or uh, infl inflammation should be either zero, or at least for inflammation should be zero to one. And of course, the third is that there should be no worsening of fibrosis. And these three diff different endpoints are hard to meet. And as a result uh, of this, uh, the 25 milligram arm or the 10 and 10 milligram arm of opioid acid did not meet this significance, so was not considered to meet that primary endpoint. Now, since the two primary endpoints were conditional for uh, success, the first fibrosis improvement was met and it was considered to be successful. Now, if you look at the component of steatohepatitis, whether you're looking at improvement of NAS score by two, or if you look at ballooning improvement, uh, ballooning of hepatocyte or inflammation, all of those improved in 25 milligram arm. When you look at the overall assessment of steatohepatitis, for example, telling the, uh, or asking the uh, hepatopathologist whether steatohepatitis was seen or not, in that context, there was significantly higher improvement of steatohepatitis without worsening of fibrosis. Uh, finally, when you look at subgroup analysis, whether it's beta based on stage two and three, or uh, uh, based on presence or absence of diabetes, uh, 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 or disease activity, and all those subgroup analyses, 25 milligram arm was actually superior. Now, there were some adverse events, but these adverse events were mild and moderate in severity and was equal across the, the three different arms. It's important to remember that when you actually look at the side effect profile of obituicolic acid, it's, very, it's known to be associated with 
uh, increase in, in, in lipid profile and, and also some pruritus. And that's not only yeah, unique to beticolic acid, it's probably a class uh, side effect for FXR agonists. In that context, lipid profile, uh, LDL cholesterol increased initially, but as it was allowed, to, the investigators was allowed to actually manage the patient's lipid over time. These, um, uh, the dyslipidemia actually improved, whether it's actually LDL cholesterol increase or a decrease in HDL cholesterol over time and came either at baseline or very close to baseline. So the management of dyslipidemia that is seen during OCA treatment is, uh, is, seems to be easily managed by standard of care in practice. The second end point, which is pruritus, uh, of course, was seen more commonly in a 25 milligram arm of obeticolic acid. However, uh, over 95% of these cases were, uh, were very mild to moderate. If you look at pruritus uh, that was severe enough to, call, to uh, result in discontinuation, now remember the discontinuation here was per protocol, so the patients did not have a, uh, a say into discontinuing the drug. So per protocol, discontinuation uh, uh, was higher in the OCA 25 milligram. And in fact, when you look at quality of life of these patients, it wasn't actually any different than any other, um, uh, um, any, uh, those who actually continued uh, with the treatment. Finally, uh, the uh, um, other uh, side effects, whether it's actually uh, hepatobiliary side effects, cardiovascular side effects, those were quite rare and they were uh, very similar across the three arms of the study. So in conclusion, uh, the study was actually very successful in terms of improvement of fibrosis without worsening of uh, steatohepatitis. hepatitis. It improved not only some of the individual hist histopathology of steatohepatitis, hepatitis, but also improved liver enzymes, ALT, GGT, ASD, and the, uh, uh, the, most of the side effects are, are, are mild. And of course, this study is ongoing because of its event-driven and then it's require, uh, required to have uh, long-term follow-up and hopefully we'll get those, uh, those data in the future.